In this video, we're going to have a look at Venn diagrams and how they relate to some common uh, IB Maths probability questions. So I've given, uh, given you an example Venn diagram here where we have our universal set, so that's our sample space, and inside of this is our two events, A and B. Now these red numbers, they are our probabilities, and these need to add up to one. Uh, these need to add up to one inside of our sample space such that we have a proper Venn diagram question. So here are some formulas that are given in your formula booklet and we'll look at those as we go across. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a bunch of answers to possible uh, IB maths exam questions. So the most, uh, the most simple, uh, what, what we can deduce from this Venn diagram is the probability of A, event A, well this will be the probabilities that are inside of our circle of event A, which will be 0 0.3 and 0 0.2. So this would be 0 0.5. The probability of event B, this would be 0 0.4 and 0 0.2, so 0 0.6. Now, if we want to know the probability of not A, it's this A with a little dash at the top, this is going to be 1 minus the probability of A. So it's going to be 1 minus, and we know the probability of A was 0 0.5, so therefore, 0 0.5. And the probability of not B would be 1 minus the probability of B, which is pretty much everything not in B, so it would be the 0 0.1 and the 0 0.3, which is 0 0.4. Okay, we have now the intersection and union. The probability of A intersection B, this, this curve here that looks like a, a mini mountain, this is A intersection B, and intersection means and. So the probability of being in A and B, that's going to be just this section here. It's in A and in B, so this will be equal to just the 0 0.2. 0 0.2. The probability of A union B, so this U here, this means union, and it also has a meaning, it's or. So the probability of being in A or B, so it can be in A or it can be in B. So it's going to be everything inside of our circles. So it's going to be 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4. So we're going to get 0 0.9, 0 0.9. Now we can express this outside bit, that's going to be what we just found, but not that, everything other than that. So therefore, the probability of A union B, and if we put the dash here, this means everything outside of this, which would be our 0 0.1. Okay. Now, I will uh, highlight one of these formulas. We've just done the complementary events formula. That's what we did down here and here. That means the complement of A would be uh, A dash, that's the opposite probability. Uh, the one that I want to show you, which some students find a little bit confusing, is the combined events formula. And what this says is that A union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B subtract the probability of A and B. Now the reason this is the case, we know our answer is 0 0.9 because if we add the probability of A and B together, it would have been 0 0.5 and 0 0.6, which is 1.1. And we can't have a probability of greater than one because a probability of one means certain. So what's actually happened there is when we counted A, all of event A, we covered this whole circle. And then when we added the event B, we covered all of this. And what you notice is that we actually covered this 0 0.2 in the middle twice. We counted it in both times because there was an intersection. So in the formula for A or B, you need to add the two events here, but you need to subtract the intersection once because we, we had it twice in that uh, addition. So that's why when we subtract the intersection of 0 0.2, we get 0 0.9. So the goal of that was to understand where this formula comes from. It means that if there's an intersection of two events, A and B, uh, if we just simply add them, we'd be counting that intersection twice. So that's why we need to subtract it away. Okay, we uh, do get some tricky ones with 
conditional probability. So if we had the probability of, let's say, A given that B, sometimes students find these conditional probability questions a little bit tricky. This means that given that we are in B, given that we are in B, so we are only going to look at what's inside B, which is 0 0.6. So given that, and that bit becomes the denominator, 0 0.6. So given that we're looking at that bit, find the probability that it is also A. And in that bit there of B, uh, the A, the probability that was in the A circle would be 0 0.2. So we get 0 0.2 over 0 0.6, which is uh, 1 over 3. We could just simplify it to be 1 over 3. So the probability of, let's say, B given A, so given that it's in A, so we're only going to be looking at what's inside the A circle, 0 0.5 becomes our denominator. What's the probability that it's also in B? Well, the 0 0.2 was in B, so it'll be 0 0.2 over 0 0.5, and this is just uh, 2 over 5. And we might get a tricky one, the probability of, let's say, A given not B, so we are, the given that not B is very important, we need to make that the denominator. So if we look at what's inside B and we consider everything outside of it, there is the 0 0.3 here and the 0 0.1. So 0 0.4 will be our denominator because it's not B. We can't have anything inside B. And then what's the probability of it being A out of this group? Well, of this group of 0 0.3 and 0 0.1, the 0 0.3 was inside A. So it'll be 0 0.3 over 0 0.4. Okay. So there are a few different uh, variations of how these questions can be asked, but the goal of this video was these Venn diagram questions. They can ask a bunch of different types of questions. Uh, it's really important you know what these symbols mean, these, this intersection, the union, and the straight line, which is given that, and also the complement. Okay, I encourage you to practice some of these questions. So good luck.